This is Josh Mandel with the second in a series of videos on new features in Smart V2. And today we are going to focus on token introspection. And if you're not familiar with token introspection, we'll do um, a little overview of where this fits into the Smart uh, App Launch protocol. Who should look for these token introspection capabilities? Who might call these API endpoints? How they can be used? Uh, and we'll do a brief introduction to some of the underlying protocol definitions. So to get started, I'm going to navigate to the index page of the Smart App Launch specification. Uh, and you can see that you know, from the top level, there are two patterns that Smart defines for client authorization. Two different ways that an app uh, or a service can get an access token that it can use to talk to a, a data server. And in both of these cases, the app gets an access token, uh, and then it can use that token to issue API calls to a Fire server. Um, and at the bottom here, there's a link to this section on token introspection, which describes an API that servers can use to look inside of an access token and understand uh, what it's all about. So to motivate this a little bit, let me first uh, share an example from the Smart App Launch specification. And so this pertains to user-facing apps that want to connect to an EHR. And typically a user, like a patient, might approve access and so say, it's okay for this app to see certain parts of my clinical record, and then the app gets an access token. And it's worth just first understanding from the app's perspective what that access token is all about. And so at the end of this authorization flow, the app obtains an access token by talking to the Fire server's uh, token endpoint. And uh, in this flow, the app makes a request by pro providing an authorization code, and then it gets back an access token response. And that access token response includes the access token itself, as well as information about what scopes or permissions that access token is good for, as well as information about the expiration time and who the user is who approved that access token. Um, so basic properties we can expect to see are access token, uh, this expir expires in property, the list of scopes, and then if OpenID Connect is being used, uh, there will also be an ID token to identify the user. And so from this perspective, the app doesn't need to look inside the access token to understand what it's all about. And actually the way that OAuth defines this protocol, the access token is opaque to the app. There's no guarantees about the format or the contents of this actual string, but the access token is just a string that appears in this access token response. And so we can see you know, in our examples that the access token response might look something like this where the app gets this access token, which could be uh, structured. It might be in the form of something like a JSON web token, which you see here, but it could also just be a long random number. The only real requirement in OAuth is this access token can't be guessable. It has to have, have enough entropy that a, a client can't just make one of these up and sort of stumble their way into generating a valid access token. Beyond that, anything is fair game. And from an app's perspective, that's fine. The app doesn't need to see inside because the app knows what the access token is about from all these other properties. In this case, it'll know the patient, it'll know the permissions. So for example, this has the permission to read patient demographics as well as to read all observations about that patient. The app really has everything it needs in order to work with this access token. Uh, and so from this perspective, the app doesn't need to call any kind of introspection function because the app has this access token response. So what is introspection all about then? If I just said the app doesn't need this because the app already has all the information, who is the intended uh, user or client or audience of token introspection? And the answer here is generally additional resource servers. So maybe I'm working with an EHR that has access, that provides access to some core fire data, clinical resources like medications and problems and allergies. But maybe I'm working at a health system that wants to stand up an additional resource server next to the one from the EHR. And that additional resource server might be hosting things like imaging studies with DICOM data, or it might be hosting genomics information with variant call files, maybe just different types of data that the EHR doesn't know about or, st or store nat natively. And so if I'm building a resource server like that, ideally I'd like to work within the environment that's already offered in this hospital or health system. I'd like applications to be able to connect to this new resource server and reuse the existing access tokens that are already being uh, issued within the context of the underlying system. And that's really where token introspection fits the bill. Uh, this helps additional resource servers host new APIs where clients can come by and say, here's my access token. And the new resource server 
can figure out what that access token is good for by asking the EHR. So here's how the token introspection API works. It's defined in RFC 7662, and I'm not going to go into great detail, but this RFC is really the source of truth on token introspection. But the core of the token introspection API is that the authorization server hosts an introspection endpoint, which it advertises uh, as part of its metadata or discovery uh, document. And then clients can call this introspection uh, endpoint by passing in a token, basically asking the question, what is this token here? What is it good for? What permissions does it convey? And the app will get back a, a response. So it might post this access token saying, I've got this token that starts with MF underscore nine. What's it good for? And the authorization server will respond with an introspection response saying things like, this token is currently active or not? Or what here are the list of scopes that are associated with the token? Or here's the client ID associated with the token. So an example response might look something like this, where the client gets back this JSON structure that uh, identifies that it's an active token associated with this client, associated with these scopes, and so on. So that's the underlying core functionality defined for OAuth 2 token introspection. And in SMART, we profile that um, core functionality in a way that makes it work nicely with the rest of the SMART ecosystem. So we document a set of required fields and conditionally required fields, which I'll talk about in a little bit of detail here. So when a client, uh, such as uh, maybe this imaging server we've been talking about, when that goes to make a request, let's say it sees an access token um, that somebody's using, it says, hey, imaging server, can I please have all the imaging studies about patient one, two, three? The imaging server needs to figure out whether it's gonna honor that request. It's received an access token. How does it figure out whether that access token is valid for imaging studies on patient one, two, three? Well, it can use token introspection, first of all, by calling the introspection endpoint from the EHR, and it'll get back, um, first of all, a flag saying that yes, this token is still active. So that's good, that's an important or necessary condition. It'll get back a list of scopes. So in this case, there might be a scope like patient slash imaging study dot rs, right? Something like this. And if the scope of patient imaging study rs is part of this scope survey, that's another good or necessary condition. So the imaging server knows, all right, this access token is generally uh, designed to be used for or grant permission to imaging studies associated with the patient in context. Um, this also leaves on the table the question of who is the patient in context? And so we can drill into the requirements a bit more. We can see there's always gonna be a list of scopes. There's always gonna be information about the client ID to whom the access token was issued. And there's always going to be information about when the token expires. Now we have some conditional requirements. So if the access token was originally granted with some launch context, like a patient, then that patient property is also going to be present in the token introspection response. So if this says patient123, then that's how the uh, imaging server will know that the patient in context for this access token was patient123. Um, there's also information about the user in the case where this access token um, was originally granted together with some OpenID scopes. Um, so what does that mean? Um, if the access token was originally accompanied with an ID token, then a couple of uh, claims or properties from that ID token are going to be present in this introspection response. And what this amounts to is an internal identifier that the authorization server uses for that user. The combination of the issuer and the subject basically says, here's the server uh, that generated this internal identifier, and here's the subject or identifier itself. Those two fields can be used to recognize that this is the same user as last time, uh, for example. As long as these two fields are the same across different responses, you'll know that it's the same user at play. But in the smart um, app launch spec, we also have uh, an ad additional property called the fire user property in the ID token. And this really provides a bridge from OpenID Connect into fire resources. So if we've got something like a fire practitioner or patient or practitioner role associated with the, the user, the fire user property here is the URL of that fire resource. So we can drill in and use all of our standard uh, fire elements and property names to understand details like that person's name, address, clinical credentials, uh, preferred languages, and so on. Uh, all of the data that's modeled using those fire resources, uh, we can point to a fire resource using this claim. And so what we say for token introspection is 
if there was an ID token originally uh, issued with a fire user, then that fire user claim should come through in the token introspection response. So let's take a quick look at an example here uh, where the introspect API call uh, passes in a token that we want to ask about. Um, it's also worth saying in this example, there is an authorization token on this request. So why are there two tokens? This one represents the token we are asking about. Um, so the imaging server is saying, I got this token, what's it good for? This header represents the um, requests authorization itself. So the imaging server might be registered as a client with the EHR, and here's how it's communicating to the EHR, hey, I'm this imaging server you know about, it's me making the request, please respond uh, because I have permissions to make this request. So that's why you'll see two access tokens here, but this is the one that we're asking about. And then the response is gonna tell us, yes, this is an active token, it was first issued for this client 07A, it's associated with these scopes that are gonna provide access to um, read data about fire uh, patients. In particular, if there's a patient in context. Uh, and we'll dig into this syntax a bit in the next video because these are um, scope syntax examples that have been updated in the most recent version of, of SMART. And then we get information about the fact that the patient in context, the patient for whom this scope applies is patient 456. And then we'll additionally have information about the user who approved um, the access. In this case, the internal ID using subject um, and the, using the EHR as the issuer. And then we'll also perhaps have a link to a fire user. And a more typical example here would actually say something like a related patient or a practitioner might be signing in as the user, granting access to a record about patient 456. Um, it would be unusual, and maybe this is even a, a bug in our example here, to have one patient directly granting access to another patient's record. Um, so that's something that we can fix in the documentation itself. But that's a quick overview of token introspection in terms of how we use it in Smart V2, in terms of the underlying API definitions in RFC 7662. And you can tune in to the next video in the series, which is going to go deep on granular scopes.